let's go through some of the points on uh, on the survey that, that we commissioned uh, loss of desire uh, our survey revealed a third of women two-thirds of men are not satisfied with their sex life when most people say they're not satisfied with their sex life, they generally mean the amount of sex. Now, we know that men and women have the same libidos, but there are lots and lots of reasons why women don't want sex as much as men do. Number one is that they tend to take on more, so they have less energy. And number two is, again, what we're talking about with the blog, is orgasms. Women have far less orgasms than men do, so there's less motivation for them. I mean, almost every single time a man has sex, he has an orgasm. About 30% of women regularly orgasm with their partners. So there's a big motivation difference there. Also, um, women tend to need an emotional connection with sex, whereas men prefer their sexual needs met before they're sort of inclined to motivate themselves to provide that emotional connection. So you can have quite a nasty chain reaction, as you can imagine. Um, our survey also found out that half of women and men are actually worrying about that their partner isn't happy with their mm. sex life. I think we have this unrealistic expectation of sex. I think I blame all that on TV shows. Honestly, quite reputable TV shows have like couples who've been together for 20 years suddenly overcome by spontaneous lust and late for work. And it's like, I'm shouting at the television, it doesn't happen like that. And people watch this and then they look at their own sex life and think, well, that's not what I'm doing. Mm. So my partner must really think that he's missing out. So they're worrying about stuff that isn't actually real. Well, our survey showed that nearly half of women and men would like to be more adventurous in bed. Uh, one in four women would like to act out a sexual fantasy in the future. 60% have never told their partners. I found that one in four women quite low because since Fifty Shades of Grey, whatever you think of the book, it's had a massive, massive effect on women acting out fantasies. And I get dozens of emails from women saying that, you know, giving, can you give me practical tips on how to act out scenes from the book, mild scenes from the book? Um, and that hasn't stopped, so I'm surprised it was that low. In terms of not telling your partner, I really am of the camp that you shouldn't necessarily tell your partner sexual fantasies because I think people seriously think that it's a secret wish that you want to do something and it's not necessarily and you can get yourself in all sorts of trouble so if you do want to try something new like being tied up like it was in the book you're better off saying you know I'd like to be tied up then you are saying I'm having fantasies about being tied up because right, the first thing your partner says thinks is well who who's doing the tying up I bet it's not me and we uh -huh. start off on the wrong foot already. You can start already. alienating people. Um, this is an interesting one. 44% of women said their body confidence does affect their sex life, and 22% of men also mm. said that. I'm surprised the female figure wasn't higher, given the you know extreme selfie, self-image sort of you know mm. generation we live in. But 22% of men, I was quite astonished at that because. You know, there was a time when a man would never have said, you know, no sex, please, I'm feeling fat today, or, you know, I feel like my body doesn't look good. It was unheard of. Mm. That was just something women said. So I find that quite alarming, that, you know, it's actually not getting better for us and getting worse for men as well. They're being dragged into it all. Well, um, uh, nearly 80% of women admitted that they don't instigate sex with their partner. You said this is the... <laughs> it made me laugh when I read this, because you said it's the ele elephant in the room. A lot of ladies would be thinking, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, instigating, talk, not talking about sex becomes the elephant in the room, doesn't it? But instigating sex is a real problem because if you're the person that's always asking for sex, you think, you know, you start to feel like you're harassing the person, you start to feel like a sex mm. pest, and the other person, of course, starts to feel harassed and, like, very non-sexy. If somebody's always up for sex and you're not, you know, your libido drops because you're thinking, well, there's something wrong with me. So it is a real problem. But, like most things, and like this blog, I mean, talking about sex can solve pretty much any sex problem you have. If if you can talk about it, you're going to be fine.